so I'm Rob Hawkes and um, I'm a senior lecturer in English studies at Teesside University. So I described my involvement um, in, in the creative arts in, in, in perhaps a, a, a way that might not seem obvious to most people. So I teach English literature um, and cultural studies on the English degree. Um, so I'm not a practicing artist as such, but I would describe what I do as a very deep, as deeply involved in creativity um, and thinking about literature and culture in all sorts of creative ways and talking to students about it is, is I think, a really, um, I think, an, an important and, and kind of creative side of what I do. Absolutely, yeah. I, and uh, I, I'm going to pick you up on a couple of points there. Um, so just just to remind, just if I have time at the end, I want to ask you more about your your latest podcast that you've been doing. Sure. But I mean, I, I, I was at university uh, for a few years and it was only after I left that I found out that actually you do dabble a little bit in music. I do, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a bit of um, uh, a, a, a kind of well, it was a, a thing I did, a thing I did when I was when I was young, so I was in my sort of teen, late teens or twenties. I uh, taught myself to play guitar and and sang a bit and joined a band and and um, so I had the whole kind of dream of, <laughs> of rock and roll stardom. Um, but then, um, as I think a lot of people do, I just sort of you know the things change. The the other people in the band, you know went off to do other things and we, we we stopped doing it and you kind of think oh well that's I've moved on from that now and it's and and uh um and sometimes and I think we're encouraged to think that way sometimes oh well you need to grow up and and leave those sorts of things uh behind you and it's only been uh I mean in in the last year again like a lot of people I've uh in the the lockdown a year ago I sort of dusted off my guitar and started playing it again I just realised the, the just the, the the pleasure that brings just just of of um, messing around and do it. so so yeah I've, I've done a few sort of silly covers of or mashups of, of pop songs and just recorded them and put them on Facebook and um, it just reminded me yeah of, of a thing I sort of put put in the past and almost and almost forgotten about and. Um, um, yeah, I don't know what that meant really, but, uh, but I well, think... I guess, you know, we're, we're, um, I guess, I think it's actually really quite important because it kind of makes you think about, um, what a sense of achievement is and what a sense of achievement is in different circumstances. Like if you were up on stage and you're supposed to be doing a professional gig and you can barely get your fingers around the chords, it's going to be like a really humiliating experience and you want the earth to swallow you up. But like if I'm at home with Miyuki at the you know, Ailey and I manage to string a couple of chords together and then get kind of maybe sing half of half a verse vaguely in tune. I'm chuffed, you know, it's like I've, I've conquered the world there. Absolutely. Um, I think so also, I, we have this kind of narrative about the arts often, don't we, that, that you know, it's own, well, again, in, 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 the, in the, 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 the kind of economic narratives we, we, that we have about things as well, there's the, the, they're only really worth something if they make money and, and, and that, the, uh, so therefore, you know, it's only worth pursuing music. And if, like, like I said before, you know, if you're going to make it and be a, be a rock star, um, and we dismiss all the engagements that we have with, with art, whether it's music or, or, you know, other kinds of, of painting or craft or that, that um, have tremendous value, but the, but that, um, you know, do, just doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be your main source of income. Yeah, but, but I think it's even worse than that because, you know, I mean, actually, it's like two million people do earn a living through the creative arts. It's a massive, massive industry. It, it, you know, it's bigger than agriculture. It's bigger than automation, aviation and the automobile industry combined. It's certainly a hell of a lot of all respect to it. The fishing industry is, is like a tie. It's like a thumb on the body of the creative arts and what it brings financially to this country. So it's not, it's not even like even though it does all that, that's not recognised. People still think you should be doing it as a hobby in your spare time at your yeah. own expense. It's like, yeah, something needs to be done about that, I think. Absolutely. I'm, 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 I'm well, putting I, you to the task there. Um, well, 
isn't it what you're doing <laughs> i suppose that has been a bit of what I'm, I'm doing yeah but really i think what i'm doing is collecting personal stories because for me they they are something of, of huge value and significance um so hence talking to you here so tell me um was this was was this something like from childhood were you involved in the arts did we a folks creative um uh, you say you were kind of, you know, you kind of gave up your hopes and dreams of being a pop star, but, you know, you still wanted to be involved in the arts in some way and, and kind of when did it start and why? Yeah, well, um, I do, I, I've, I, I do have a very musical family and um, my, da my dad, my dad was like in a skiffle band in the, you know, when it, just, you know, in the, in the village where he grew up, him and his brother and a mate had a, you know, T-chest bass and, and all that sort of in the 50s and then um, um, but he's also both my parents have sung in choirs and things like that so so I kind of grew up with music kind of really all around me and it was it was my dad's old guitar I found in the loft when I was about I don't know 15 or 16 and uh, but he'd also you know he'd kind of stopped, stopped playing and then and I, I found it and said oh well, you know what's this and just taught myself a few chords and I went from there um, so, so music particularly was was an important part of my life growing up. But um, literature too, and and I, I always loved books. I always loved reading, and so I think that's you know what what at that point in my life I, I was in my then in my twenties. I um, I did an English degree at university, and that's I guess I channeled my more creative energies more into my own, my studies of. Of, of literature and culture so I went on from my undergrad degree to do a master's and then a PhD and and um, and, and then spent several years um, surviving on on kind of scraps of part-time teaching hours in in different universities on, on, on short-term contracts and then uh, eventually in 2012 came to work at, at Teesside um, so yeah I've been working nearly nine you know i mean my ninth year of of, of lecturing at teesside now brilliant awesome well i have to say from 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 my side of it it was it was you know it really was absolutely i find that degree to be literally mind-blowing and purposefully mind-blowing like actually wanting to get in there and and get people to question not only what they thought but why they thought it and the frameworks in which they were thinking and the, the things that they might be doing without realizing they were doing and bringing that into consciousness and making you know um uh, questioning intelligent reasoning human beings and and proving that you could you that the through a certain process and giving people the tools and the encouragement uh, that that didn't need to be you know there's no you don't have to be certain intelligence it's like everybody can be taken through that journey and that was absolutely fantastic to see and big respect to all of the english department for doing that to to everyone's brains that was <laughs> yeah absolutely i think it's really hard to explain to um to many people that that's what studying english and and, cre and creative writing because because it was a, a joint english and creative writing degree that you did wasn't it and and um though I don't teach creative writing I'm not I'm not a creative writer myself as such but um but yeah I think it's really it's it's not widely understood I don't think that that uh studying English studying writing studying culture can be this um mind-blowing and as you describe it a really really kind of uh experience that 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 changes your 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 understanding and your outlook on the world and um and i think and, th and again i think that that's a really creative process of, of you know thinking thinking new things thinking differently about the world and um I, and for i mean for me coming to when i when i first came to work at seaside it was uh it, it was it it was different to different english departments i'd worked in before uh i mean not 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 completely different there were, there, there were lots of lots of similarities with other places but uh there did seem to be something about the team uh and the group of people um that that i joined in 2012 and and um well we had helen davis so absolutely. Um, you know yeah. it's different to any place where you don't have helen davis <laughs> basically 
um, yeah, who, who um, yeah, who we missed, we missed terribly um, after, uh, since since you moved on to other pastures in. Uh, Absolutely, uh, we're, we're going to have to lure her back one day um, for whatever means. Whoever, whoever first makes multi millions, uh, their job is to 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 get Helen Davis back here at least at least a couple of days a, a couple of days a week. So. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to ask um, that kind of uh, question about, um, you know, how the last year's been from somebody who's, you know, obviously we spoke to a lot of students whose degrees have been affected. Some of them have been able to go and work like artists in individual studios, but um, studies have been really badly affected. And, you know, I imagine that for the university itself the, uh, and for the staff who work there, the impact's been um, pretty devastating. Yeah, it's been, yeah, it's been a really difficult, um time i think uh for me one of the one of the real difficulties has been you know not i mean it's it's this, this is true of just for all our interactions of course but the, the, you know not being able to 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 meet with other people and, and speak to other people directly um because of course what what we do is so founded on talking through ideas and sharing our sharing our ideas and perspectives on on the text we've been reading or on the ideas we've been exploring and um and you can do that it's like you can do aspects of that through video calls and through online discussion boards and things but there is something different about being in the same space with other people uh which is like i say what we're what we've all missed in all aspects of our life in lots of ways but um but yeah it's been it's been quite a, a difficult one for uh for well for all kinds of educational settings um i suppose Definitely. and i think you're absolutely right i think there's something in everything that i've ever done in life not just the arts like uh politics or you know our local tenancy association whatever it is uh, there's something about um, people sitting in a room together on a regular basis. Do you know, it only needs to be like 10 people, but kind of something happens when 10 people kind of physically meet together in that way um, on a regular basis that I don't think that you can replace with, with anything online. Um, uh, and yeah, I just hope that, you know, at least outdoors we get to, to do stuff this year. I'm planning to anyway. Yeah, well, if you don't mind, if you don't mind me referring back to this, the the, the um, when when uh, you were on the English degree and um, on the module I taught on on modernist and postmodernist writing, um, you gave a phenomenal phenomenal performance of T. S. Eliot's The Love Song of J. J. Alfred Prufrock to to the rest of the group, um, which you know which. which made sense of the poem in a way that just reading it off a page or or uh, another kind of recital just just doesn't and you could do that you know you could record that and play a recording of that across stream it through the internet and share it and that's how we so all of my lectures this year have been pre-recorded and and um students students then access the recordings but there's just not there's something different about a live um a, a, you know a live performance whether it's a recital of a poem or um or or, or a lecture i suppose that which yeah. is in itself a sort of a, something it is, is a kind of performance in itself yeah way. well i remember when kind of live tv started happening and live interviews and that you know the excitement and the potential of what could happen in that far outweighed any anything that you're going to see that was pre-recorded um and uh yeah it's just uh and i guess that's it it's like if it's recorded it's a trapped moment and you're re-experiencing something that's been trapped and uh whereas if you're there when something's actually happening mm. you know i could i could like if i was recording proof rock i'd have my lines up there in case i forgot and uh, no one would know but it's like you know that whole thing of having it having having it all come out of your head right there and then. And then, yeah. you know, poetry is pre-thought thoughts, but what you're doing, like in lecturing, um, I would imagine that your the way that your seminars go is very much steered by the people in the room and mm. the people that, um, the atmosphere that's generated and the way in which people can speak up is, is very different um, on this. 
yeah yeah I've, i think i mean on, on the other hand there have been there have been some advantages as well there have been so there have been certainly uh it it's it's helped support some students i think who 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 struggle to get to campus or or who find those kind of um th those those social situations may be more difficult and so there have actually been like i said some some um some positives where um engaging with the engaging with materials online has actually worked better for some people than than um so there's there's maybe yeah, some i mean this is this is kind of you know i hope one of the lessons that we learn when we go back um uh, if we're going to go back um is is the people that you know their whole lives are kind of a lockdown and that have been excluded or or not felt able to fully participate and uh, just to make sure that like things like the red room and my future events i'll i'll, I'll run zoom and, and stream it like with live transcription for anybody that kind of wants to attend and can't mm. attend in person i hope we keep all that and we keep thinking about the people that um that aren't going to get out of lockdown very easily yeah. as uh, as um as i think you know we we um have a module on our undergraduate degree on representation and cultural identity that uh culminates in a student conference where where it, I mean, it's one of my absolute favorite things every year um where students uh do deliver their own uh own piece of work they, they do their own research they choose their own topic and text um based on we we explore various kind of theories and approaches to thinking about representation from from uh from the perspective of gender and race and disability and sexuality and class uh so we look at various topics but then it's down to the students to pick their own uh approach and um and and to choose a a text which could be a tradition a text in a traditional sense like a novel or a play or a poem or um or, or, or a, a, another kind of literary work but could also be equally a film or a tv show or a piece of advertising yeah, I, I remember it was in that module that i ever came my kind of cultural snobbism about you can't do teleprogram it's it's a, a literary degree and i i did um saga naren in the bridge um, so um yeah yeah but, but yeah. actually so that this this year just gone we had to do that as an online thing. you know we couldn't we couldn't be uh again in the same space and have a have a traditional kind of conference where where students stood up and gave presentations and um so we yes yeah, so we ran it online with with pre-record students pre-recorded their their talks um which was partly i mean going back to what we just said about pre-recording versus live uh but we didn't want there to be a sort of any sort of techn technological problems on the day that that caused issues so so we had pre-recorded presentations but the the work was for that was was incredible it was, it was and, and i think actually like, like i said that the online um version really helped a, a lot of people to feel maybe feel more relaxed because they were just recording in the comfort of their own homes perhaps in a in a more familiar environment and didn't have that that sort of nervous tension of having to stand up in front of an audience um but the other thing i want to say about that was that so we we've had we've have a a visiting keynote we usually have a visiting keynote speaker at that conference and and again as it was it was happening online so we had um a visiting keynote bar our visiting keynote speaker this year was dr lucy reynolds who's a disability activist and um and researcher a phd in disability studies um but herself has cerebral palsy and her conference keynote talks really uh was 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 really interested in the possibilities again of for, for inclusion of the of the of these ways of online working that that um could enable participation in events that maybe would be much more difficult for um you know for for, for some um so, so is that online anywhere rob um the um we, there, there was there is a recording of the of the keynote i'm not sure if if it's shared if if it's shared on it'd be nice to get hold of that if possible i can always put it out put it out on the youtube channel um if you can get me a recording that would be great that sounds like important stuff that people yeah people really need to know and think yeah, about. It, was a, it was a brilliant um really brilliant inspiring talk
Brilliant. Well, Rob, I think we'll leave it there. I think we've pretty much found our way through all of these questions. Really, really lovely to speak to you. And, and let's keep in touch and, and see, see what we can work on together over the next couple of years. Absolutely. All right. Take care. All right. Take care. Cheers. Bye.